guys and welcome back to another video here on my channel. As you might can tell, the voiceover sounds maybe a little bit different than usual and that is because I am at home like the rest of the world should be right now. And that also means that I don't have my regular mic. So excuse um, the sound, but this is the best I can do for now. I hope you guys are safe and well. Many of you guys have been asking how I am doing and I am always, you know, being very transparent and honest with you guys. So I might as well tell you that I'm actually home with suspected um, virus infection. I'm not going to say the word, the C word, and I'm not talking about cut. <laughs> but um, I don't want this video to be put down or anything like that. It's, um, it's a little bit tricky. So yeah, I am home with suspected virus infection. Uh, you might be able to hear it sometimes when I speak. Um, I run out of breath really easily and uh, I don't cough that much though, it's okay. Um, but I have a lot of the symptoms, I'm not going to go into detail, that's just too boring. The main thing is that I am fine, it's uh, of course not a very pleasant feeling. But still, here I am, and I'm at home and resting, and basically just laying on the couch. That's pretty much it. In this video, we're gonna do this, well, it already started, you have seen two minutes of it already, but we're gonna do a watch me work, and it's gonna be with this marble and rose gold chrome design which I find is very pretty. This is actually a really old design. I don't even remember when I did this. Could it be like maybe like a year ago? Um, but I had it on my computer and figured, whoa, I should really edit this. And then we'll do a watch me work and chit chat maybe. Uh, so here I'm just applying the white. Before that, I just build up the nails as usual. What else did I do? Oh yeah, you maybe saw the pinky on her, what is it, right hand. It's actually made with acrylic. I didn't do it. It, it was, um, I think she broke her nail at some point and I didn't have time to help her. So she ended up going to someone else and they put acrylic on. So that's why it does have a little bit of a different um, like color to it, I think. I should also maybe mention the shape of her nails because I know that that is probably something that some of you are going to comment if I don't talk about it. Yes, some of her nails are quite curvy. Those are her own nails, her own natural nails. And then as you can see here on um, the middle finger, that is an extension. So those nails are straight. and. That is just how it works with some clients. Uh, this particular client, her nails tend to curve quite a bit once they come out to a certain length. And then uh, we just have to cut them down and uh, apply a new extension to it. And that is just how it is. You, Yeah, you can rebalance and do all that stuff. I don't do it if it's not super curved and if it's super curved I might as well just cut it down and do another extension on it. So I mean it's really, it comes down to preference and how you like to build and how, to, how you like to work. For me I think this works best for this particular client. So now you know. I have started with the marbling and what I did is that I put down a white first and then I just add color into that wet layer and mush it around and I think I'm going in with a shimmery color. Yeah, it's definitely a shimmery white. I think it's called something with butterflies. I'll, I can put the name down here, um, but it's shimmery which will make the marble look even more like a marble, so that is always nice. And I think the trick here is just not to think and not overdo it, because if you stay on one nail for too long and mush it around, eventually you will have 
a mush of colors and you won't get that pattern or shape that you are looking for. So here I have buffed the nails, cleansed and buffed, and now I'm going to add some more details on it. I am using my stripey brush for this and for the previous design for the marble look I was using my block brush, absolutely one of my favorite brushes in the entire world. It's perfect to do any type of marbling with so it's really nice. Here you can see that I'm actually turning the nail upside down and that is to make sure that I get that point in the center of the nail. So that really helps if you want things to be centered in general. So just turn the hand upside down. Like every time I put crystals on or whatever, if I'm doing any type of nail art really, I flip the hand upside down like 20 times just to make sure that everything is centered and equal on both sides. So um, big tip from me to you. So here I'm just going in on the other hand, I'm just going to do the same thing, but the patterns are going to be a little bit different, pretty self-explanatory, I think. Whew, I need to catch my breath. Um, so going back to the world situation, I hope you guys are doing well and that you are healthy and safe. I know this is a very tricky situation for all of us, and um, but I think that the most important thing here is to try to adapt to the situation and not panic. Um, of course, I understand that some of you are in horrible financial situations, and uh, I, I can only imagine. I have some money saved up, so. I manage but still of course I, I feel the effect as well as all of you guys um, there are some things that you can do and I would say my biggest tip for you guys is to not let go of social media because once this is over your clients are gonna come back and they're gonna want to do nails and that is the thing. We were actually talking about this in um, my podcast together with my colleague uh, Frida. And she said something very important. And that is after being in this industry for over 30 years, the nail industry is one of the few industries that always bounces back the fastest because nails is something that will give you that luxury feeling but you won't have to spend a fortune so just remember that once this is over you need to catch your clients again and make sure that they come to you so don't drop your social media presence be there upload pictures if you want to do tips and do nail art if you want to do something on yourself I of course recommend the Red Iguana hands so much because they really do help you to get that content out. So my biggest tip for you guys is to not drop the social media presence. So going back to the nails here, I've started with the chrome nails and as I really want to emphasize that rose gold look. I have decided to apply a neon pink and that is in general how you create those really rose gold type of designs and going in with the top glass and okay so I can't really tell you how long you should cure it and whatnot because it will differ from different brands and so on. I think I cured this for about 25 seconds in, and this is of course a non-tacky top gloss and then you rub it into that surface. With this pigment it is actually a little bit more forgiving than the general like um, silver chromes. So if you over cure it a little bit it's not gonna slap you in the face and if you under cure it it's not gonna start crying. I mean, it's it's um, it's a little bit more forgiving. It's a little bit easier to work with. So I would say, okay, try around 25 seconds and then just take it from there. I also really want to push 
um, for using a glove like that when you are rubbing the chrome into the nail because it really does help a lot to get that super smooth finish and you get the excess um, powder or pigment out of the nail so that is really good sorry excuse my voice I feel like today it's really can you say uneven I feel like I'm going <laughs> but you know the drill I'm trying my best here um, anyways I have moved on to some crystals and decorations and moving those little tiny caviar beads around with my stripey brush and adding a little bit more gel around those crystals so what I do is that I start out with a low viscosity gel cover the entire nail and then I add a little bit more gel where I want the crystals to go and then place it into that and if you look at a crystal you can see like from the side that it has a little girdle or if you want to call it like a corset but um, that little wall around the crystal that wall is super important to cover so that is what I'm doing with first here the caviar beads and then adding more gel so always be careful not to cover the entire crystal with gel because then you will lose the facets and you will lose the sparkle obviously but always make sure to cover that girdle that is what's gonna make it stay as you can see here I am going around the crystal a little bit extra with that gel and you can see a little bit more up close here placing it and then yeah you can see how I kind of push the gel towards the crystal and because I have that slick layer on already onto the entire nail the gel is gonna create that smooth transition going from the crystal over to the nail itself so that is why I don't apply a blob of gel right where I want the crystal to be I want to have that slick layer first to make sure that I don't get the little gel walls around my crystals if that makes sense Whew, it's, uh, getting a little bit more difficult to speak but I will try my best just a couple of more minutes to go and you know what I, I miss speaking with you and I haven't done really one of these longer videos like chat with me videos in a long time so just feel like I want to do it anyway so I would love to hear how you guys are feeling and um, how your lives are right now if you just want to vent in the comment section if you need some love and support from your fellow uh, nail ninja squads in here please help each other out if you have maybe some tips and tricks and stuff like that oh I should probably mention what I'm doing here uh, I am actually adding tack on to the chrome so what I did is that I finished cure the chrome and the top gloss that is super important I think I cure it for at least two minutes once I have applied the chrome pigment and then I take a tiny little bit of tack and then I just go around the edges underneath so I really cap that uh, chrome and then very lightly going over the top of the nail sometimes I do this twice sometimes even three times depending on the client if I know that she's gonna be a little bit more harsh on her nails then I will probably go in and do maybe three layers um, but this does help a lot I don't have any chipping with my chromes when I do this but the key ingredient here is to cure the chrome again once you have rubbed it into the nail and you will have to do it for at least two minutes depending on um, well the product that you are using so right here I'm just going in with this super no, no this is not super shiny this should be flat matte because I think we are gonna do this matte and just going in with the bottle brush around like the big areas and then I take my swirly brush and uh, cover those in between areas or whatever you want to call it so yeah and over of course the chrome we are going to apply that super shiny and every time as you can see here every time I go over the chrome nails I go around the sides and I'm, I'm kind of hugging the sides as well and the tip of the nail 
so yeah and then we're just gonna finish this off I know you guys have been asking a lot about online classes and such. As many of you know, I have been working on my online platform for a while now. It's been over a year, I think. And I thought that, whoa, this is the perfect time for me to finish that platform. Unfortunately, I got sick, so I just have to wait this out. But it's going to be up soon, hopefully. I'm really working hard and I'm doing lots of planning at least. So I'm really looking forward to that. And there you're going to find shaping, uh, you're going to find nail art, structure, baby boomers, pretty much everything you have ever asked for me. So I'm super excited about that. Stay safe. Love you guys so much. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.